confess you're in love you're in love you must try to confess he's everything you adore the one love you dreamed of and waited for take a chance take a chance Tell him now that you care Don't refuse, win or lose You must make him aware You're in love, you're in love Can't you see? You're in love, cries my heart to me Take a chance, take a chance, can't you see? Check, please, Caesar. Of course. What are you doing out here, Scarface? Now, take it easy, Mr. Hobart. Understand you've been doing a little gambling. About $50,000 worth. With Mr. Bayless's money. What $50,000? What are you talking about? Now, quit stalling and answer my question. You're not kidding anybody, lawyer. You're running a successful brokerage business because Mr. Bayless staked you. You should be grateful to Mr. Bayless. And instead, you sell his uranium company stock. Phony uranium stock, based on an option on desert land. You shouldn't interrupt like that. You sold half a million dollars worth, but you didn't turn over all the money. You held 100,000 back. You gambled half of it and spent the rest. Are you calling me a thief? Yes, you're a thief. Now, you listen to me, you cheap hoodlum. If you ever try to contact me in public again, I'll have you and Bayless both thrown into jail. I have enough evidence on Bayless to send him up for life. I'll have it your way, Mr. Hobart. Only you better pay Bayless. Mr. Bayless is an important promoter. He doesn't like to be cheated. Mr. Bayless is a crook and a gangster. Mr. Bayless doesn't like to be called names. Beat it, will you? I have something on my mind. So is Bayless. He's got you on his mind. Here you are, sir. Oh, thank you, Caesar. Everything all right? Couldn't be better. Take care of our friends, Hank, and I'll grab the phone. Hello? Oh, good evening, my friend. We just now walked in for the theater. How's it going with you? Threats, huh? I'm surprised. I expected denials, but threats. All right. Reasoning gets us no place. Take care of them for good. Drop by in the morning. <laughs> Good show, Ilana. Thank you. Oh, Frank, I don't feel like going out tonight. Call me tomorrow. Hmm? Thanks. I'll get my own car. 
Thanks, Mr. Hobart. I'll have your car brought up. No, not just yet, thank you. You know, Frank, it was my opening night. I'm tired. Too tired to listen to me? All I ask is a minute, two minutes. I'm sorry. Better get in and sit down. You know I love you, Ilana. Yes, I know. You probably think I'm terrible. You're a very poor mind reader, darling. This is what I think of you. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, Frank. I, I appreciate it. I'm sorry. I, I can't accept it. Why not? Frank, try to understand. You've been very generous. It isn't that. It's... Oh, why must we go over it again? Oh, don't be afraid, Ilana. But I am. You're gambling. All those men you see sometimes. Chad Bayless? Yes, among others. You know, I'm in your country on a work permit. I can't take a chance of being involved with these people. I might be deported. You think I'm involved with the underworld? Let's just say I don't love you. I can't marry you. I'm sorry. Excuses. Always excuses. The fact is, there's someone else. <laughs> oh, yes, there is. There's got to be. Good night, Frank. Oh, please, darling. You don't understand what this means. Good night. But somebody else a whirl, will you, Mac? I need a little fresh air. Sure. A new body.
Must be around the corner. Nate, get out and get that drunk off the horn before he attracts the cops. I don't like him. I don't like him snooping around here. It's bad for business. Go on. Okay, boss. Lieutenant's not here, Captain. Sergeant Lackey is. Sarge? Hello, Captain. What can I do for you? Uh, the lieutenant's off tonight. But I can get him. Evening, Lieutenant. Evening. Sergeant? Hello, Walt. Is the murder car? Sure is. Medical boys have taken the body. Jess is checking for prints. Captain Smedley? Around the corner upstairs in the dance hall with 15 beautiful hostesses. 15. That's where the call came from. OK. I can't believe that some of you, at least one of you, didn't see something or hear something that would help. Come on, somebody, speak up. It's like I told you, Captain. The band was playing, the joint was jumping. Nobody heard or saw anything until that auto horn started blasting. Yes. Oh, I'm glad you're here, Roy. You know who got killed? Frank Hobart. Shot. Oh, that's great for the papers, anyway. Trumbull here called in at 1222. All we've got so far is that Hobart was alone in the car when he was found dead by the bouncer here. Everyone here is like the three monkeys. Nobody saw anything, nobody heard anything, and they won't say anything. What was Hobart doing in a neighborhood like this? Was he robbed? Uh-uh. Over 200 in his wallet. And a diamond ring worth at least a thousand bucks. What he was doing here, I don't know. But I do know where he'd been. Oh? Cipriano's. I found this in his pocket. Stub from a Cipriano's dinner check, dated tonight. Well, that's all I know, and it's your project. Good night, Roy. Good night, Aaron. Lieutenant? Can I talk to you a minute? Check him, will you like him? Yeah. What's your name? Sandra Lamoureux. Sandra what? Lamoureux. Your address? 118 Court, Apartment C. I, I wasn't going to say anything to you about this, but I figured maybe I'd better. You know something about this? Well, tonight there was a guy in dancing with me, giving me a large spiel about being big with the mobs, you know. And then he tried to date me, which is strictly against orders, so I put him in the deep freeze. And he left. Well? Well, nothing, I guess, except that after he left, about five minutes after he left, that horn started blasting. Are you sure of the time? Sure, I'm sure. He left, see? And before I could even start dancing with anyone else, I heard that horn. Lieutenant, do you think he could have done it? Would you recognize this man again if you saw him? Well, gee, I, I guess so. Look, don't you have pictures of those guys? You know. Yeah. I want you to be at this address tomorrow morning. See Sergeant Lackey. All right. Captain, could we let the... Lieutenant. Lieutenant? Sorry. How about letting these people go? They don't know nothing, and holding them here is bad for business. Yeah, they can go as soon as they give their names and addresses to the officer here. Let's go. See Brianna. Sure thing, right. Thanks, Lieutenant. All right, music man, let's have a little home sweet home. We're going to close the store.
Sorry, gentlemen, but it's closing time. Police, you want to play a little game of questions and answers? City police? You're outside city limits. Listen, mister, we might not be so good-natured if we have to call in the sheriff's man. Do you have any objections to hearing the questions first? Yes, questions and questions. Let's have a sample of yours. Was Frank Hobart here tonight? Sure, so were lots of other people. But right now, you focus on Hobart, mister. Who was with him when he left? Let's stick to your questions, uh, not his. Did Hobart leave here alone? He sure did. You're making that pretty definite. Well, Mr. Hobart came out. He went over Miss Vance's car. She's a new singer starter tonight. She's a friend of Mr. Hobart's. This girl and Hobart, what do they have to say to each other? Well, I couldn't hear him. But after a while, he got out of a car and she drove away. Then he got in his car and left. What time was that? Oh, about 11.15. She finishes at 11. It was a little after that. Would you say that he was following her? I wouldn't know. And now it's my turn to bat. I'd like to ask a question. Why all this interest in Mr. Hobart? Is he in trouble? He was murdered tonight. Shot. Murdered? You said this girl was a friend of Hobart's. What do you mean by friend? Gentlemen, starting now, I got nothing to say. I'm not getting a nice girl like Miss Vance in trouble. Nice girl? How long have you known her? Knowing a girl a long time don't make her nice. There's lots of nice girls I never even met. If you want to know anything about Miss Vance, you better ask the boss. Thanks, we will. Ah, Lieutenant Argus and Sergeant Lackey. Good evening, Caesar. Good evening. Well, we'd like to have a little talk with you, official. Of course. As I remember, Lieutenant, you favor cognac late at night, huh? Or perhaps you don't drink on duty. No, not on duty. You knew Frank Hobart, didn't you? You know the lawyer? Certainly, certainly, Andrew. He's a regular customer here. Mr. Hobart is... You said knew him? Hobart's dead. Murdered. But he, he was here tonight, only, only a couple of hours ago. Any idea who did it? No, not yet. And this is Ilona Vance. I understand she was a friend of his. I can save you time, Lieutenant. Ilona Vance... Couldn't kill Frank Hobart or anyone else. You can tell that just by looking at her. Caesar, if killers look like killers, our job would be so much easier. Miss Ilona Vance, tell me about her. There is not much to tell. A little over a week ago, Mr. Hobart asked me to audition her for a singing job. Her voice is good, not great. She rehearsed all week, and she opened tonight. Anything else? Pretty handy for a girl, having an influential friend like Hobart getting a job for her in a place like this. Hate to disillusion your sergeant, if that's possible, but Miss Vance doesn't know that he got her the job. She thinks it was her agent. Hobart made me promise not, not to tell her. <laughs> what do you think of that? Well, we'll file it under unlikely. Was Hobart in love with her? Keeping her. In love with her, yes. Keeping her, no. Now, let me tell you something about yourself, Lieutenant. You have been a cop for, for a lot of years. A good cop, I hear. But a human being, never. Your job, and therefore your life, has been devoted to dealing with crooks, with people who just think in terms of a fast buck. <laughs> now, a person like Miss Vance, there's someone you'll never understand. Oh, well, thanks. <clears throat> Was she in love with him? No. And I suppose you're going to say that's why she killed him. No, I haven't said she did. What do you know about her? Her background, her personal life, anything? Nothing. Not even her address? That I got. She's an employee. Here it is. Put it down, put it down. 417 Locust, apartment 203, the Creighton Arms. Respectable. Inexpensive, middle class. Do you still think Hobart keep her? Well, thanks for the philosophy, Caesar. All right, let's drop in on Miss Yoni Vance. Maybe she'll sing us a little tune. Tonight in his swank car by what police believe must have been a gun of 38 caliber. 
Although the weapon has not yet been found, the police have been questioning all people in the surrounding area. Miss Alona Vance? Yes. Police. I'm Sergeant Lackey. This is Lieutenant Hargis. How did you? Won't you sit down? You used to having the police drop in on you, Miss Vance? You don't seem surprised to see us. I heard about Frank's murder on the radio. I thought you'd be coming around sooner or later. Oh, you heard about it on the radio? Yes, on the radio. You and Hobart were pretty friendly, we hear. I liked Frank. Liked him very much. I see. Well, the way we hear it, Hobart was in love with you. What's wrong with that? Can't you see I feel awful? Can't you come back tomorrow? Awful meaning sorry? Of course I am sorry. I told you, I, I liked Frank. I liked him a lot. I mean, sorry that you killed him. All we wanted to know, Miss Vance, is whether you saw Mr. Hobart after you left Cipriano's. Did you see Mr. Hobart? No, no, I didn't. This was my opening night, and I was very tired. I came straight home. I was too nervous to get to sleep, so I turned on the radio. I understand. But there's something I want you to understand. This is our job. It's our duty to talk to people who might be able to tell us something about Frank Hobart. I, I suppose so. We're not going to bother you anymore tonight, but we'll be back again. There are probably some things that you can help us with, talk to us about. I want you to try and get a good night's sleep. Thank you, uh, Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Good night. Good night, Lieutenant. It's tough on a girl, going through a thing like this. Tougher on Hobart. Meaning what? She's lying. For my money, she killed him. Mr. Wilbo, to see you, sir. Sure, Hank. Send him out here. And, Hank, hold the rest of the breakfast until after Mr. Wilbo's left, huh? I understand, sir. Stan and I want to have a little man talk, darling. Do you mind? Of course not, darling. Good morning, Chad. How are you, Mrs. Bellis? Fine, thank you, Stan. Don't be long, sweet one. Mary's hungry. Be just a few minutes, honey. Oh, sorry, Chad. I didn't Don't apologize, to... Stan. <laughs> Makes me feel good knowing other men want her. And I got her. It was a neat job. I like things neat. Sure nobody saw you? Not a chance. You're a good boy, Stan. Just keep on like you are, and we'll never have any trouble. But always be careful, Stan. Never make any mistakes. I don't like mistakes. I know too much about you for that. But what I know, I could send you to the chair. Be careful with that, too. That's $5,000. Now scamper and stay out of sight until this business dies down. Anything you say, Chad. That's what I say. Good morning, Jeff. Morning, Lieutenant. Uh, the captain wants to see you. Thanks. Oh, uh, Lackey left a message. Said to tell you uh, Sandra Lamoureux was in and looked at the pictures in the gallery. Did she identify him? Not a one. OK. Good morning, Art. You want to see me? Yes, uh, this Hobart mess. Well, so far, it's still a mess. It's too soon to tell much. All we know is that Hobart left Cipriano's last night and stopped in the parking lot. He had a talk with a new singer that started out there. Her name is Ilona Vance. It seems that he got her the job, but she didn't know it. He was in love with her, but it was a one-way street. My, my, my. And did they leave together? Well, she says no, and the doorman says no. And they both say that she left in her car first, and then Hobart left. 
She claims that's the last time she saw him. Do you believe her? Well, there's no reason not to so far. She's a foreigner, isn't she? Uh-huh. And probably here on an artist's work permit. Uh, what about checking the immigration boys, getting her record? All right. What about Hobart's connection with the mobs? He defended quite a few of the lads. Yeah, he'd defend anybody who'd pay his price. We're running down his latest shady connections. Yes? Sergeant Lackey, sir. Send him in. Morning, Captain. Roy. Look what I found. You found? I found it. Wait in line, mister. Your turn will come. It might be the murder gun. An S and W thirty-eight. Same caliber as the bullet that closed Hobart. Barrel shortened maybe two inches, meaning probably a hood's gun. This looks like it's been in a cesspool. You say you found it? Who are you? My name's Les Fuller, and I work for the Bureau of Sanitation. He means he's a sewer cleaner. Yeah, I know. But let him tell it. Go on. I was cleaning out a drain, you know, taking out the junk when I found the gun. I showed it to a cop, and he called him. That's all there is to it. And this drain, where is it? On Soto, near Judson. See what I mean? Half a block from the scene of the murder. Fred, come in here a minute. Well, thanks, Mr. Fuller, for your help. It might turn out to be very important. Thank you, sir. Any time I can be of service, let me know. Mm. Yes, Captain? Hurry this down to ballistics. Tell him I want a quick comparison with the bullet found in Hobart's body. Fingerprints? No, this gun's been in water and mud. No chance for prints. Yes, sir. Uh, Sawed off 38. Only got a close range. But a hood could hide it in his pocket. Or a girl in her purse. Meaning? Ilona Vance. Lackey, when you get an idea in your I don't head... see anything wrong with talking to the girl, Roy. Maybe she'll recognize the gun. Maybe it belonged to Hobart. Of course. But first stop in at ballistics. If the gun doesn't check, forget it. All right. Let's go. How did you get in here? There was a woman cleaning the apartment, so I came in and told her I'd wait. Who are you? What do you want? Sandra Lamoureux, hostess at the Loveland Ballroom. Awful hard work for a girl with sore feet. Do you know where the ballroom is, honey? No. It's on Judson Street, right around the corner from Soto Avenue. All right, grab your shoes and get out. Judson and Soto. That's right. Judson and Soto, upstairs. It's funny. Last night, just a little bit after midnight, I'm dancing with this sailor. It was awful hot in there. I was tired. Oh, those sailors. Get to the point. I'm getting there, honey. Will you relax? Well, like I said, it was hot in there. So I went over to this window for a little cool air. All of a sudden, I heard a noise. You know, a shot. So I looked down. Guess who I saw? Who did you tell? Who did you tell? Nobody! <laughs> Told the cops there was a guy in there dancing with me. Giving me a big spiel about being with the mobs. I told him he left just before that horn started blasting. So this lieutenant had me down to the police station to look at some pictures just in case. And you saw a picture of me, huh? I, I recognize that scar. But I didn't let on. Now, the back of your picture was your name and address. So I came over. So if you stick to your story, you want money, is that it? They paid big for a job like the Hobart killing. I could have told them the truth, you know. You still could, couldn't you?
Anybody beside the maid know you're here? I mean, did you tell anybody you were coming to see me? Oh, oh, only Marge. She's my best friend. She's waiting downstairs. You know, you haven't got anything on me. You lied to the cops. They're not going to believe anything you say from now on. Now, here's a C note, and it's more than you deserve. Oh. That's to remind you not to come back. Oh. Now, get out. Get up and oh. get out of here. Each new morning start There's a song in the heart of Paris Every day of the year All the laughter you hear Is the song in the heart of Paris Every friendly bonjour Is a word of amour and a stranger can find Bonami And you'll know you belong Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Caesar. Of the song, the song in the heart of Paris Every friendly bonjour is a word of a moon and a stranger can find but a me and you'll know you belong when you're part of the song the song in the heart of Paris your office, Caesar. We want to talk to that girl. Oh, sure, sure. I hope you brought your own rubber hose, huh? That's Caesar. He sure lives high on the hog. Good evening, Lieutenant. You wish to see me? We have some questions, Miss Vance. Good evening, Miss Vance. You do not have a permit to carry a gun. I looked it up. I don't understand. I don't have a gun. Then you borrowed it. Who from? I tell you, I never owned a gun. I never borrowed a gun. What are you trying to make me say? Maybe it was Hobart's. Maybe you shot him with his own gun. Oh, I didn't shoot him. Well, let me talk to her, will you? Wait out at the bar. No, thanks. Lieutenant, is this the regular procedure in a case like this? Yes, it's part of regulation. Then you believe in doing things according to regulation? Or you surprise me? I do, Miss Vance. Oh, yes, very, very much. You strike me as the sort of man who doesn't pay any attention at all to regulations, but does pretty much as he pleases. Well, it's not very important how I strike you. Oh, I disagree. It's very important to me. It seems that my life is in your hands. What do you mean? I'm quoting Caesar Cipriano. Oh, Caesar's inclined to be a little over-emotional. I wouldn't pay too much attention to him. Now, would you tell me where you were last night, say, from about 11.15 until we saw you? I told you last night. I know you did, but would you mind telling me again? 
It was my opening night. I was very tired. I came straight home. I couldn't get to sleep, so I turned the radio on. That's how I found out about Frank. Well, when you left him here at Cipriano's, how were you two getting along? We'd been quarreling. Why? Frank wanted to marry me, and I just didn't like him that much. He was very jealous and insisted that there was someone else. Was there? Is that part of this? No. No. Go on. Well, anyway, there isn't. Then you didn't see Frank Hobart again that night? For the third time, Lieutenant, no. Miss Vance, a uh, routine question. Do you own a gun? No, Lieutenant, I do not. I'm afraid of guns. The ballistics report tells us that Frank Hobart was killed by a bullet fired from this gun. We're trying to identify it, trying to locate the owner. Would you please look at it? I never saw it before. You're certain? Lieutenant, have I answered all of your questions to your satisfaction? Yes, for the time being. Then you'll be back? Yes, but not right away. Oh. Lieutenant, I depend on your word, your good faith for this. Should I get a lawyer? Well, of course, that's up to you, but I don't think it's necessary. Very well. You see, I trust you. Well, I have to be going along, and thanks again for your cooperation. Drop me off at my place, will you, Emma? I want to get some sleep. Sure. I showed that girl the gun. She never saw it before. Sure. Anything new come in? Lieutenant with you? No. He's grabbing some sleep. That's what I'm going to be doing in about 10 minutes. Well, I hate to wake him, but... Wait a minute. What's on your mind? This fellow called, left his number. Said he wanted to talk to the man in charge of the Hobart case. Said he recognized the murder gun. Saw its picture in the paper. No sense in waking the lieutenant until we know it's important. I call this joking myself. It's you, Emmett. Good morning. What? Identify the gun. Well, why didn't you call me earlier? It's almost 10. I'll be right down. Morning, Lieutenant. Morning, Jeff. Sergeant Lucky? In your office. Thanks. Right. This is Whitey Pollock. Pollock? Lieutenant Hargis. Glad to make your acquaintance, Lieutenant. The sergeant here tells me you can identify the gun. Is that right, Pollock? Yes, sir. I saw the picture in the paper. Right away, I recognized it. So, naturally, trying to be a good citizen like I... I phoned you last night to tell last you... Last night? You phoned me last night? Yes, sir. I, I didn't see the papers till late, so I, I couldn't... So you phoned me because you wanted to be a good citizen. Not because you wanted to be paid for it. You know about this, Emmett? Yeah, Roy, I know about it. Did you? You talked to Pollock last night. You got his story. What's the matter? Anything wrong with that? But you didn't call me last night. You didn't call me till almost 10 this morning. I didn't see any reason to bother you, Roy. You said you wanted to sleep. 
Thanks. Go ahead. Read me your story. Well, sir, I knew this gun right away, because it used to be mine. That is, before Broser took it away Broser? from Broser? Nick Broser? Yes, sir. He's dead now, sir. I know. He stepped in front of a cab. Tell me some more. Well, back in those days, I used to work in Broser's place. You know... Yeah, we know that, too. The River Dance Hall, down on the waterfront. First called out of bounds by the Army, and then closed by the liquor board. Go on about the gun. Well, like I said, the gun used to belong to me. Until he took it away from me. Said he'd give it back to me. He never did. He gave it to this singer he had working there for him. Said she needed it for protection. I see. And of course, you remembered her name when you read it in yesterday's paper. That's right, sir. Alona Vance. Oh, thanks, Emmett. Thanks for letting me sleep. Look, you gotta face it, Roy. This ties in the girl tighter than the hangman's noose. Does it? Well, I know. How long have you been hanging around Skid Row? Well, I ain't drinking now, Lieutenant. Honestly, I ain't. No, I, I took the cure. Oh, you took the cure, hmm? How many times? Three times. How many times have you been booked? Fifty? That's all. Get out. Now, wait a minute, Roy. You still got to sign a statement. What for? On your way. What's gotten into you? I nail the girl down and you throw away the hammer. Emmett, you're a sergeant, but I'm lieutenant. And that means exactly what it's supposed to mean. I'm boss. It means, for example, that you phone me when something turns up. It doesn't mean that you work alone or let me sleep. If I needed that kind of help, I'd have asked you to sing me a lullaby. Does that square us around? Sure, Roy, sure. But you got me wrong. I still think Whitey Pollock's story nails down the girl, and I still think you ought to get his statement. The statement of a habitual drunk? Who'd believe it? Except you. All right, Roy. You made your point. You're the boss. What do we do now to keep that girl out of trouble? How about that immigration report? Be tight, Roy. I'll get it. You do that. Start digging into Hobart's connections with the mobs. Find out what mobs didn't like him. Find out which mob didn't like him the most. Get on with it and let's have some results. Messages, Jeff. I'll be back in about an hour. Sure thing, Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Good morning, Miss Vance. May I come in? Oh, yes, of course. I need company. Would you have some coffee? No, thank you. More questions? More questions. How did you get your job at Cipriano's? It's one of the best spots in town. Singers must fight to get a job out there. My agent sent me out there. I was auditioned, and I got the job. That's all. Are you surprised, Lieutenant? You worked at Cipriano's. And before that? I wasn't working. Well, how long were you in town before you went to work out there? I'm not so sure. Four months, I think. You had money enough to last that long? Yes. I made it in San Francisco before I came here. How? I don't understand these questions at all, Lieutenant. Of course, I'll answer them, but... All right. Answer. I taught ballroom dancing in San Francisco. But not here? No, not here. Will you please tell me why you asked me these questions? I'm trying to clear something up. 
what? As I told you before, Lieutenant, I trust you. I depend on your advice. I haven't seen a lawyer, but now I have a feeling that... Yes? That you're against me, that you're trying to trap me, that I can depend on you. If my feelings are right, I... I think I should answer no more questions until I have consulted a lawyer. Well, that's your privilege, Miss Vance. But all along I felt that... If I was really sure that you... I'm a police officer. I've got a job to do. Oh, yes, I know, I know. I'll answer your questions, Lieutenant. Thank you. Did you ever hear of a place called the River Dance Hall? No, I don't believe I ever did. It used to be run by a man named Nick Brosa. He was killed about a year ago, run over by a taxi. You don't remember reading about it in the papers? No. Then you never knew Nick Brosa. All along, I've had the feeling that I was being... Oh, what's the word I want, Lieutenant? Framed? Yes. Why do you say that? I don't really know. It's... It's just a feeling, call it intuition, whatever you please. But now that you mentioned the River Dance Hall, I, I'm certain of it. Then you did work there? Yes. Why did you lie to me? Because I was ashamed to admit I work in such a place. But I had to. I didn't have a penny. And you knew Nick Brosa? Yes, an awful man, terrible. He made a play for you? I had to leave. You just picked up and left? What do you mean, picked up? I left one night and never went back. Did you talk it over with Brosa first? No, no. Did he ever suggest to you that your life was in danger? No. What do you mean? He never gave you a gun. A gun? What would I do with a gun? You see, this is what I mean, Lieutenant. I am being framed. Oh, you've got to help me. Please help me. I'll help you. Sorry, Lieutenant. I should have knocked. Hello. Who? What do you want? You shut your cotton picking head. I'll tell you what I want. You gave me a black eye, and I can't work at the ballroom. Sorry ain't good enough. Sorry's cheap. Not me. Oh, no. Because, mister, that black eye's going to cost you exactly 500 bucks. Now. Immediately. 500 bucks? Why, you little tramp, I'll tear your other eye out. Now, hold on a minute. 
Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Miss Lamoureux. Uh, sorry about my bad temper. A uh, black guy and a pretty girl like you, uh, yeah, it's worth 500. Where do you live? Oh, it's just a few blocks. Yeah, I'll bring the money right over. Well, that's more like it, Mr. Stan Wilbo. And I want that dough in five minutes. Do you hear me, good? Five minutes. Because in exactly six minutes, I'm calling Lieutenant Hargis. Police Lieutenant Hargis. Maybe he'd like to know what little girls see when they look out windows. <laughs> Guess I fixed his buggy, huh? Fixed his buggy, fixed your hearse. So, Sandra, Sandra, you're such a fool. Fool? How many fools you know can get 500 bucks in one little old phone call? Just pick up the phone, All right, dial have it, it your way. It's too late now. Here's the raw beef for your eye, and I've got to get to the drive, and I'm late now. Oh, thank you, Margie. You know what? You know what I can do for you. I'm gonna buy you some pretty pretties out of that 500. Sure you will. Sure you will. Sure I will. I will too. Department, quick. Now, never mind what number this is. Hurry. Just get me the cops. Hargis, hurry! Hargis speaking. Well, who is this talking? Well, all right, don't give me a name. Who? Sandra Lamoureux. Well, where? Well, thank you. Concussion. Serious. Where was she live? As a guest, but only a guest, yes. She was clubbed brutally several times by a blunt object, maybe the butt of a gun. Whoever did it meant to kill. May I speak to her for a moment? You can try, but uh, only for a moment. Miss Lamoureux, do you remember me, Lieutenant Harvest? Lieutenant, I should have called you. I tried to question your friend, Margie Harris, but she was afraid to talk. Who did it? Stan. Stanley Wilbur. I lied to you, Lieutenant. I saw his picture in your files. He wasn't in the ballroom dancing with me. I saw him down on the street, and that big lawyer was killed. Get him, Lieutenant. Get him good. This thing will blow you some. Not anymore now, Lieutenant. Mm. 
Did you bring her in? I checked with the captain first. His orders. Try not to worry, Miss Vance. It won't be too long. Now the left hand. In your eyes, sit down. You ordered Miss Vance picked up. You ordered her booked. I did. On what evidence? If it's not too much for me to ask. The man you put in charge of the case. The man I put in charge of the case was getting emotional. Emotional with a suspect, a mistake. On what evidence? Answer the question. You're a good cop, Roy. Very good. Only this... Captain, I asked you a question. The gun. It belonged to her, all right. It was the one Nick Browser gave her. The testimony of Whitey Pollock? The testimony of a wino? I had Pollock brought in again. And I had two guns right here on this desk. Pollock picked the right one without hesitation. Only because he saw pictures of it in the newspapers. Only this morning he examined it in my office. But to claim he can identify it because he saw it four months ago is utter nonsense. This isn't evidence. They'll throw it out of court. Enough to justify an arrest? What happened to you, Roy? You were the best man I've got, but now... What happened to me? What happened to you? Letting lackey wind you into a stupid move like this? What do you want? A quick arrest for the newspapers or a conviction? Both. And I think you're going a little too far. I'm going a lot further, Captain. A lot further. Hold it, Roy. Lieutenant, come back here. That's an order. <laughs> Dirty little tramp. She's still alive. She must have a head like an anvil. Sandra Lamoureux? How do you know she's still alive? How do I know? You're here, aren't you? Who else would finger me for you? Yeah, I'm here. I got an ambulance for her. I'll get one for you, too. Jack, Roy Hargis. Got a pickup for you. 833 Park Terrace, apartment 201. No, not the dead wagon this time. Just the ambulance. We're saving this one for his trial and execution. Yeah, right. What do you mean, execution? The dame's still alive. She was. Maybe she still is. But I'm picking you for the Hobart kill. Oh, no, you don't, copper. That I didn't do. Yeah, I know. At that time, you were on a little reunion with your family, Little Rock, Arkansas. Now, listen to me, copper. You gotta listen to me. I don't have much choice, do I? What do you think I'm going to do, walk out and leave you? Go ahead. I'm listening. All right. I'm telling it to you true, copper. All of it. Sure, I got paid for the Hobart killing. I got most of it right here. Five Gs. Who paid you? You 
You were giving it to me true, remember? All of it. Chad Bayless. And that figures. But I didn't do it. I was going to, but I didn't. She beat me to it. She? That Meadowlark over at Cipriano's. I loan a Vance. I'm telling you, I saw her do it. All you got on me is a Saul on that Lamoureux tramp. With intent to kill. Well, that's only a 1 to 14 rap. That ain't the chair. You can check my gun. Ballistics will tell you would never find the slug that killed Hobart. You threw that gun in the sewer. This is another gun, Stan. Oh, no, I didn't. Look, I told you the whole piece. I gave it to you in a package. Why don't you take it? Why don't you believe me? Why should I? Your limousine is here. Can you walk or do you want a stretcher? Next time I talk, it'll be to a lawyer. Evening, gentlemen. He's all ready for you. Only a flesh wound, nothing serious. All right. He's all yours, Art. Thanks, Doc. So you're Stanley Wilbo. I understand you got 5,000 for killing Hobart. Well? I'll talk to my lawyer. Well, that ought to be an interesting chat. Come on. Stand over here where she can see you. Nurse, will you raise her up, please? Miss Lamoureux. No. No, don't. Don't let him come near me. Don't hurt you, Miss Lamoureux. Never again. But you do recognize him as the man who assaulted you? Yes. Yes, he's the one. Please take him away. That'll be all, Miss Lamoureux. Thank you. <laughs> that girl's testimony boxes him in for keeps. Yeah, I suppose so. Why so glum, Roy? It means you took the kickoff and ran for a touchdown. It also means complete clearance for a loan advance. Looks like it. Look, Roy, are you still brooding about some of the things I said to you? I'm sorry. I was wrong. I apologize. That's all right, Art. I was a little hasty myself. <laughs> Here's Chad Bayless, Captain. Uh, through the years, I've heard a lot about you, Bayless. This folder contains a very interesting resume of your past record and your latest exploit with Hobart. Something about phony uranium stocks. I'm glad to meet you at last. Glad to meet you here. You'll find me 100% ready to cooperate, Captain. Oh, all right, Bayless. I, uh, I had you picked up on certain information. The information is that you paid Stanley Wilbo $5,000 for the killing of Frank Hobart. Is that correct? At just one point, Captain. May I ask where you got this information? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh, that's what Stanley Wilbo told Lieutenant Hargis. Uh, the question, Bayless? The whole thing's outrageous. I want to talk to my attorney. Anything else, Roy? No, nothing. Do you have any well-chosen words for this occasion? I'll save them for my lawyer. Uh, take them away. Separate selves. Take another swing at me, Roy. I deserve it. Well, that's all right, Emmett. I'll keep it my hope chest. Say, Art, what about Miss Vance? Oh, sure, Roy, right now. Yes, Captain? We're dropping the charges on Miss uh, Vance. Have her released uh, right away in Lieutenant Hargis' custody. Yes, Captain. Thanks, Art. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, the immigration boys gave Miss Vance a nice, clean record. Go get her, Roy. Uh, 
How did you do it, Roy? How did you get me out so quickly? I pinned Frank Hobart's murder on a hood named Stan Wilbo, a hired killer. That's all. What's going to happen to him? He'll be executed. There's no doubt about it. Roy, I... I don't know anything about this man. Maybe he deserves to die, but... But not for killing Frank Hobart. Why not? Because he didn't do it. That's what I thought. Now tell me the truth. First about the gun. I was frightened and I... I lied to you. Nick Brodza gave it to me. Somehow I can't see you carrying a gun. Oh, I didn't carry it, Roy. I gave it to Frank and he put it in his car. Tell me about that night. The night Hobart was murdered. I lied to you again, Roy. I told you I left Cipriano's that night and I didn't see Frank again. That wasn't true. Frank followed me home and stopped in front of my apartment. He said he had to talk to me. Hey, Lorna, why can't we do this much at least? Go to a drive-in and have a sandwich and some coffee. Please, Elona, I need your understanding. I'm in trouble. Trouble? What kind of trouble, Frank? All right, I'll go with you. But remember, a drive-in. No stops on the way there and no stops on the way back. All right. Frank behaved himself for a few blocks and then suddenly pulled into the curb and stopped the car. Frank, you promised no stops. There's one thing I've got to know. Why can't you love me? What's wrong with me? Well, there's nothing wrong with you, Frank. Nothing at all. It's just that a person can't fall in love to please someone else. Then it is me. I'm a fool and a failure. I don't want to live any longer. Frank! I can still hear that car horn. It was so loud and so long. Almost as though it were chasing me, crying after me. Roy, I, I don't care what kind of a person he is, the man you arrested. I've got to go back. I can't let anybody die for something he didn't do. That's right. But I'm frightened just the same. Suppose they don't believe me. Suppose I'm convicted or, or sent out of the country. Don't be frightened. The jury could never convict you. First, it was an accident. Second, you're coming in voluntarily. And third, there's no proof and can be none that your story isn't true. Let's get it over with. Good.
paid for it. Take it back. His money is no good in here. Night, Roy. Night, Evan. Did you like it? Just as good as it ever was. Thank you. Break this over your bow. We are witnessing an historical event. A good cop like the lieutenant turning into a human being. <laughs> Thank you.